Half in the bag. Movies can eat my cock. Well, we've been doing quality work. What is that? What? What is that you're holding? It's a VCR we've been repairing. Oh, I forgot all about that. Yeah, me too. Huh. Just un until a little while ago, I've been looking at it. Yeah. It looks like we've done more damage. It's possible, yeah. But that just means we have more progress to make, right? Yeah. The more damage we do, the more we'll have to repair, yeah. and the longer I mean, we'll be here. See, the thing is, though, I've been wanting to watch Reckless, so I've been like m more interested in actually fixing the VCR. Oh, that's a that's a book, though. What? This is uh, this predates uh, VHS tapes. Watch this. Watch this. Whoa! How'd you do that? What's inside it? Words. And all these words, they run together to form sentences. Like what I text to people? Yeah, but longer and probably less erotic. Oh. So what you're saying is I can't watch that on the VCR? No. Oh. You have to read it. So why am I bothering to fix this? <laughs> Seen any good movies lately? No. They got us out here using planes to mop floors, fellas. Get your head up, son. You fighter pilots. Train, 11 o'clock. It's military. Let's give those newspapers something to write about. Gotcha! Hey guys, welcome to Half in the Bag. I'm Jay. And I'm Mike. And we just saw Red Tails. That's right, Jay. Red Tails is the new film from world-renowned entrepreneur and billionaire filmmaker Anthony Hemingway. Red Tails tells the story of Native American fighter pilots in World War I and has been praised by critics for its historical accuracy, memorable characters, and moving dramatic realism. So far, Red Tails has smashed worldwide box office records, even sailing past James Cameron's Avatar, and generally loved by moviegoers and critics alike. How was that for an intro? Well, just like the movie itself, Everything was wrong. So I guess reviewing Red Tails was obligatory? It's to be expected, yes, yes, because as we all know, um, our fans are big World War II buffs. That's why they would want us to talk about it. They're also fans of the show The Wire and want to see Anthony Hemingway's first directorial feature. It's true. That's why everyone's talking about this film, of course. So what did you mean by everything in it is wrong? Uh, I, within the first 30 seconds of the movie, I was laughing at it and saying, oh no, to myself. It's it, the, everything, there's flat direction, flat characters, uh, flat editing, uh, bad score, and, and, and inappropriate use of CGI. It, it, yes. Everything was wrong. <laughs> well, the, the CGI in it was, was acceptable, like, it's acceptable on its own terms, but in the context of this movie and the style of movie yeah. they were going for, it was inappropriate. Right like that. This movie is, is I think it'll go down in history as like this, this fascinating anomaly. Just because it's, it's this $100 million movie and it looks like a B movie. Yeah, if like, it wasn't such a high budget and it didn't have George Lucas attached to it in any way, I, I think it would just be a completely forgotten movie in a couple years. It's it's really, like it's not a catastrophe. It's not a train wreck. It's just a completely forgettable bad movie. It's the worst kind of bad movie where it's just like, everything's kind of boring and flat. Well, yeah, it, it's, I think it's just like, it comes off like a made for TV movie, like worse than that. Which is ironic because there was a made-for-TV movie that's I, I have not seen, but from what I understand, it's more dynamic and, and, and interesting than this one. I don't know. I would describe it as a train wreck. Really? Yeah. And ironically, there's a train wreck in the opening scene. <laughs> that's true. Even the dog fights weren't very exciting. No, they weren't. That's because they all feel too too sterile. It, it had it had all these pieces of everything, overcoming adversity thing with the racial plot, the whole like World War II dog fights, a love story, a friendship story, like everything, it had all the pieces, but each piece was like wrong. Like each piece didn't work. Yeah. I, like when I saw the trailer, I thought the CGI of the planes flying around 
looked like a video game. And when I watched the actual movie, it, it didn't bother me as much. It was like, it was too clean and it didn't feel like you were in World War II right. era. And it was like the cinematography, everything looked like flat or compare it to something like Saving Private Ryan, where it has that like, that really gritty, like desaturated time life photo, like gritty war footage yeah. look. This just looked like, like a commercial for blockbuster video or something. <laughs> it, it, it just looked horrible. Well, the problem is that that was what they were going for. The, the goal with the movie was to make a movie that felt like it was made in the 40s. The problem with that being that this is 2012 mm -hmm. and there's a reason they don't make movies like that anymore. Yeah. Like that was a more innocent time. It was more naive time. That's just the way movies were made. We've, uh, film as an art form has evolved since then. Yeah. So one, to make a movie that's a throwback to that um, is misguided in itself. But two, to make one that's intentions are to honor you know, these people and this real event in history, it almost trivializes the real yeah. events. Yeah. They're great guys. And, you know, and the more you read about them, the more astonished you are at how really great heroes, great people. Um, and and that, that is George Lucas's goal. Like, I think his entire career now has been based on throwbacks to old serials and stuff from yeah. the 1940s, which is, which is what Raiders of the Lost Ark was and um, Star Wars. But they took those old serials and they sort of like used them as inspiration to create something new. Modernized he, it? Yeah, he yeah. didn't try to make like Raiders of the Lost Ark like an old serial because those things were shot quick and dirty and cheap. Yeah. But this like to intentionally have bad acting and bad storylines. Yeah. And that that almost seems like a like a, an excuse or like some sort of crutch like that he made that like up after, after the after movie's the finished, he's watched a screening of it and was like, "Oh, I did that on purpose." Right. It's it <laughs> kind of feels like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um almost like the whole um And it's weird to talk about the movie as if George Lucas directed it because technically he did not, but right. his his shadow looms large over the final product. Oh sure, I'm sure he had his fingers in all the Pots right. There, well, the, the the word on the street is that he did direct some of. They did reshoots, and he directed some of that. And those were the worst parts. Well, there are parts that feel like they were definitely directed by George Lucas. I, I can't confirm that they were. I don't know. But the, a lot of the parts in the during the aerial scenes in the cockpits, like the acting of the the white pilots and like the German characters, is mind-bogglingly bad. Yeah. Yeah. There goes those red tails. I sure would like to fly with them again. Yeah. That was like the literal delivery. It sounded just like that, yeah. That's um, not even an exaggeration. No, and, and so you're kind of like scratching your head going, is that intentional or not? Yeah. Or was yeah. it just like, how could you get someone to act that poorly in a major motion picture? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, it does, it's like Tommy Wiseau saying he made a dark comedy. Right. <laughs> They're trying to do something dramatic with it. You can tell. Um, but it, it, it's like it fell flat on its face and yeah. they're kind of making an excuse that it's like supposed to be in that style. Yeah. The expectations placed upon you men are high. Heavenly Father, we ask that you send your angels down to surround us as we fly through the sky. Through adversity! To, to the, the stars! stars! From the last plane! To the last bullet! To the last minute! To the last man! We fight! 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 It was, it was a predominantly African-American audience in the theater, and I felt so bad for them. <laughs> because because there's, there's a contradiction here where it's, it's, this is a film about the Tuskegee Airmen, and, and at the same time, it's also like a, a, some sort of bizarro throwback patriotic thing that's intentionally cheesy. Yeah. So it almost seems like a contradiction, like these, these poor men that had to endure racism and fight in a war and stuff. And then this is like something that's made and it's like paraded around as some sort of honor film for them. And it's cheesy and embarrassing. Yeah. And, and, and then you see, you know, black people are watching this movie and everyone's laughing at it in the theater. There was a lot of laughter at the movie, at the screening we went to. Yeah, I overheard some, some guys talking like, and they're like, yeah, it was a good movie. They seem to sort of make excuses for it. Like, it was a little corny, but I like the message that it had, I guess. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I don't know. Well, the message being what? Racism is bad. Uh, yeah. And it, then that's it, it. 
it feels outdated in that regard. Like that this this topic, especially with a movie like the Tuskegee Airmen that's been made already. Yeah. And then over a decade ago. And then you have like um, one of my favorite movies of all time, Glory. I have not seen Glory. Uh, Glory is 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 the the counter balance to this. Like if you want to point out a good example about African Americans fighting in a war. Yeah. That's the movie. That movie's beautiful. <laughs> it's so well done and, yeah. it, and it's so emotional and it's so well made. Why do this? Like we got it. Yeah. Well, the characters are all portrayed so like each one just sort of has one specific trait about them. They're all like really really cardboard characters and when it comes to them and their planes and wanting to participate, they just come across like they have a bloodlust. Yeah. And it makes them almost like creepy. Yeah. And that's not the goal, but that's how it kind of comes yeah. across. And the fact that they're cartoon characters, essentially. Yeah. Like, Everyone like is given one trait. They, so, so they're one dimensional cartoon characters, and you're supposed to relate to them as real people who actually fought in the war and somehow pull out of that. That, they're, that the real Tuskegee Airmen were inspiring war heroes. Like if you look at Glory, all those characters are really, really depthful. And yeah. They feel like real people and you become really close to them. And, and these characters, because it's played up to be a cornball patriotic World War II movie, they come off as one dimensional characters. Yeah. And so the, the, the style defeats the purpose. If the purpose is to inspire young black kids to, to have role models. You're not doing that. Yeah, give them real characters. They need real characters that yeah. they can go, or, or a 100% realistic, factual-based Tuskegee Airmen. What up, though? It's your boy, Big Snoop Deal Double G, and I'm here supporting the motion picture, Red Tail. Be sure to go out and see it and spread the word. Tell all your friends about it. Facebook, Twitter, just spread the word. Let it be known. It's a real, actual motion picture based on facts. Dig that. So as I said, Within the first 30 seconds, I was saying, oh no, because uh, the dialogue was horribly flat and on the nose as far as what was happening. And the editing especially was driving me nuts in the movie where it's like, character in cockpit says line. Right at cut. the end of his line, cut. Easy, I, I see something. It's a train, 11 o'clock. Let's go get it. To other character in other cockpit saying their whole line cut it's like synthetic it's like if you programmed into a computer how to make a movie this is would be the result like just this, this really phony like process thing with no sort of heart or feeling behind it well even in the director of this movie too where you look at it and it looks like a george lucas directed movie right, so it's like right. how much input did the the credited director really have or was it like just show up and do what george says like, yeah do do the heavy lifting yeah and well george kind of tells you what to do anthony's gonna do it all and i just have to sit back and watch now so what he said the first day we met and that's when i felt the weight of the world on me <laughs> same goes with the script i guess too yeah because the script is God off. Eight German fighters or 80 still doesn't change what I think of you and your boys. We don't care. <laughs> and it's not just the corny lines, yeah. it's, it's how everything's played out. It starts out with a, a, a sequence where there's white fighter pilots yes. and they're flying a mission and German planes come and fly around and then they go, they fly after them and then the guy goes, the guy flying the bomber goes, there goes those pilots chasing after the Germans and leaving us undefended again. <laughs> Literally, that's, that's the what line. Say. And then you're like, <laughs> okay, oh, no. so now we need to get black pilots in who won't do that. Yeah. I can't afford the kind of losses my bomber's been suffering. Can you help save lives? They're, they're fighter pilots. They're supposed to protect the convoy. If they do that more than once, how about you just order them not to do that? <laughs> you say, don't do that anymore. It's like, it's like a like a war that's run by like children. I need pilots who will put the bombers ahead of themselves. And it's like, there they go. I wish, Those guys. I wish our escorts would protect us like they're supposed to. We need the red tails. And 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 
And then like the next scene, it's like five minutes later, it cuts to them watching uh, the, the, the black pilots watching fighter footage yeah. in the, like, the briefing room, the war room or whatever. And then like stirring music starts swelling and they're like, we're men too. And we can do the job of any man. We have a right yeah. to fight for and so na, 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 And you're like, where did this come from? <laughs> it's like, that should be an hour into the movie. Yeah. What we do, how well we do it, does it matter? And you all thought what? You'd sign up and that'd be the end of a hundred years of bigotry. Get your head up, son. You fighter pilots. We have a right to fight for our country, the same as every other American. We will not go away. There's, it's just like a mess. As far as pacing goes, yeah. building the audience up to, to kind of like, they should have followed those, those airmen through boot camp, through, through getting Supposedly up. that'll be in the prequel. If this movie's successful, George, he says he's gonna make a prequel and a sequel. Well, also <laughs> speaking of the bad, bad writing, uh, there's a love story subplot in the film, mm. which is, is pretty, pretty amazing. The opening, after the opening sequence, the, the lightning, I think his name is, yeah. he's flying over this Italian city, and even though he's hundreds of feet in the air, this woman that's hanging laundry on the roof of her building sees him. They lock eyes from that far away, even though she'd be like an ant, and they wave. And then he gets back to the base, and then he walks over to her house, having no idea who she is, they've never met, and just sort of invites himself in and sits on, his, uh, sits on her couch, and then they're in love. Yeah. Uh, she's beautiful. She's the most beautiful she woman he's ever seen. She just happens to be uh, uh, in a, a very beautiful Italian woman who's single. Yeah. I guess who's into black dudes too. Oh. Once you go black, you can never go back, as they say in Italy. It's same with that plot. There's a plot line in the film about a character that gets shot down and ends up in a POW camp. Oh, yes, yes. And there's, it, it's so poorly written. He walks into the, the POW camp, the German soldier like explains who he is to everyone instead of just pushing him in there and slamming the door. <laughs> and, then, and then he goes, come into this other, there's an American guy who goes, come into this room. And he walks in, he's like, I like you. I just, <laughs> you just walked in the room. He just walked in the I, room. I like you, I can trust you. Since you're a black guy, you're obviously not a German spy. So <laughs> you're going to be helpful in our operation to escape from this prison camp that we're about to spring. He's like, I just got here. I wish we could say Can that you Can I put my bag down? It I, was so terrible. I, I wish we could say that you were exaggerating as far as like that's what the dialogue was, but it really was that. It was literally that. And then when they escape, the best part is that they escape and they decide to dig the hole out uh, to, get, to get out right before the woods oh, where yeah. they would be hidden. Yeah. They do, it's like a like a Looney Tunes cartoon. And then they're like running away and into the woods and it's it's ridiculously stupid. Well, and, and the fact that there were two scenes involving the escape. It was the one scene where he walks into the, to the prisoner camp and, he, and they, they immediately tell him about it. Yeah. And then like 40 minutes later, they show them craw crawling down into the hole and then they run away and it's like this, and then this whole complicated operation. It felt like there was 20 minutes of footage cut out of the movie or maybe there or was, Who there knows? needed to be more. Yeah. I don't know, it was, it was just like this, Bizarro, pointless subplot. Yeah. Come on, Junior, fail! So I guess we should talk about the uh, backstory to this movie, which unfortunately means we have to talk about George Lucas. Every time I see the Lucas film stamp, I break out in hives. <sighs> yeah, yeah, it's, it feels like talking about George Lucas at this point is like beating a dead horse but he's just endlessly fascinating. I'm not a psychiatrist, but when someone does actions, it's, it's fairly obvious what they are, like him saying he's not going to make a Star Wars movie ever again, yeah. like a child pulling his toys away, going, I'm going home. Right. It, it, it comes off as a little bit passive aggressive, like. But to see him on The Daily Show, when he was on The Daily Show, uh, and talking about the film as if it's some important, like socially important thing mm -hmm. and saying like, this is the first all black action movie. It's one of the first all black action pictures ever made. Is that true? Yeah. He comes across incredibly out of touch when you're like, there's been fucking decades of black action movies. There is an entire subgenre of it in the seventies. Like just a man completely out of touch and, and trying to sort of 
inflates his own sense of importance with the, the movie he's making? Well, the history of it is, is, I guess he pitched it around to studios to, to get them to pay for it. And he screened it a lo around a lot and they all watched it and nobody wanted the movie. We took it to all the studios, every single one of them, and nobody wanted it. Not one studio said, we'll do this movie. They all said, well, we don't know how to market this movie. And so he immediately attributed that to the fact that it was an all black cast. Because it's an all black movie. There's no major white roles in it at all. Everyone in Hollywood is a racist. That's a racist. Everyone's a racist. Candid comments by entertainment mogul George Lucas sent shockwaves around the country. He said Hollywood wouldn't touch his latest movie, Red Tails, because of the all black cast. And to me, that's like, maybe the reason is that it was a bad movie. But it looks like a big movie. It's a real professional movie. It's got movie stars in it. It's got everything in it. And nobody wanted it. It's possible that an all-black cast movie might not appeal to the majority of white audiences. I don't know. It, I wanted to see it. Like, I, uh, Glory did just fine. <laughs> I mean, it had Matthew Broderick as, as the lead, yeah. technically, but it was a movie about that topic, and it was just so well done that it won Academy Awards and, and did yeah. great. So, I don't know. Well, I, well, it also comes down to the... Is he doing this movie as a businessman or as an artist? It's just been a, a project that I really wanted to do. Yeah. If, if he was making this movie because this was a story he wanted to tell, um, then the business angle shouldn't have that much of an impact on it. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, and again, they all said, there's no foreign market for this. It'll never work outside the United States. So you can't, and that's- Which is what that, they say about all films with black people in Well, them. yeah, they're still- um, I want to make this movie. I want to tell this story. There's plenty of filmmakers out there that know that maybe their movie won't have the widest right. audience, but they want to tell that story. Yeah. And obviously, George Lucas is a fucking billionaire. Yeah. <laughs> spending, you know, even a hundred million dollars. Right. Like, it's not that big of a dent if that's the story you want to tell. It was all paid for, and it's not even that expensive. It's like it's a two-sided idea. One side he wants to make this this film with the specific goal. The other side, he wants to make a massive blockbuster like Star Wars and turn it into that. It's like, right. which one is it? They, they both contradict each other. Yeah. The story of the Tuskegee Airmen is a big story, and it's an amazing story. Just like Star Wars. The whole racism angle is just, it's just silly to me. Yeah, well, and also the idea of him, George Lucas, trying to say uh, that black teenagers today don't have any heroes to look up to. I think it would be a very, very exciting story, and a story that young people, especially young black teenagers, would really be attracted to, and it would show them a really good role model. Yes. And, and you don't know that, that black kids out there aren't into history. I mean, what does he know? Yeah. And, and why, do, why do you feel that it's your job to make this movie? And then when you make the movie, make it into a terribly embarrassing schlock epic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all of this could have been avoided if he had just said, like, I'm interested in the Tuskegee Airmen, and I'm interested in making an action movie with planes. Like, just end it there. Don't even bring the race thing yeah. into it, because it's so inappropriate for when you see the final movie it's like completely irrelevant to what the movie is there is a massive movement on social media to support red tails at the theaters i've heard that it's going to be a fabulous movie and uh, my husband and i actually have some friends that we have uh, collected a group of us that we're going together from twitter to facebook people are gathering groups all over the country to go see the movie at the end of the month it's their way of sticking it to hollywood while supporting george lucas because they don't think audiences are going to show up in the United States. Is that what they're saying? Yeah, they don't think anybody's going to go to it. The I in order to, there's one. Let's part, prove them wrong. Yes, we are going to prove them wrong. Let's I prove hope them so. Wrong. Yeah, and the, and the movie touches on on the issue of racism in that era in such a like a clumsy caveman ish way. Yeah, again, where, like, like someone that's completely out of touch with culture made it. So and at the same time, it's being racist towards Germans and portraying them all as like like evil like villainous bad guys. Yeah. Like, with scars on their faces. <laughs> There's a German pilot with a scar on yeah. his face. It's like, Africans, kill them all and show no mercy. Yeah. They said show no mercy. The German pilots were probably just as terrified as American pilots. 
because they're <laughs> flying planes and shooting at each other. Yeah. You know, like they're not like villains. And, and that's what I liked about like, like Saving Private Ryan or other more contemporary war movies. The, the idea here was to, to throw it back to the old patriotic John Wayne type movies. But at the same time, you're saying, you're telling a story about realism and, and actual racism. And it's, it's like, <laughs> those don't work. It, it, you yeah. can't make a propaganda type patriotic film and at the same time have a message of realism yeah. and, and racial equality in that. Yeah. Those movies were racist. They were painting the Germans and the Japanese out as like villains. Yeah. And that was the point of them. You can't do both. <laughs> It's, it's, it's amazing that no one realized that. He screened the movie around to executives and they watched it and they went, you know, yeah. I don't want to distribute this. I don't want to pay for ads for this. Why are you racist? Racist. And then it's like, and then you have movies out. They put any fucking movie in a theater now. Yeah. And regardless if it's all black cast, like yeah. it's 2012. Modern audiences aren't going to not see a movie because it has black people in it. The yeah. notion is so outdated. I, I've never met a single person that has said, I'm not going to go see that movie because it's got black folk in it. Right, right, right. Well, do, do you remember the controversy with Spike Lee complaining about the Clint Eastwood movie? No. He's like, there were black soldiers at that time. Why aren't there any black soldiers in that movie? He's like, because the specific story I'm telling, there weren't black soldiers in this unit. And Clint Eastwood was like, what are you talking about? And he called Spike Lee like an idiot. And, and for the most part, the, story, the great stories of people of color have not been told. Why do we have to label everyone's race all the time? Why? What, what does it do? To point out that they're the same. How are you supposed to point out that everybody's the same if you don't label, label them, them all as separate different? things? Yeah, yeah, okay, that makes sense. I would be willing to bet that there was tons of different races going to see Underworld mm -hmm. because everyone likes action. It brought everybody together. It brought everybody together. And all uh, Red Tails did was tear everybody, tear apart. everybody apart. No, it brought everybody together too. Through laughter? Through laughter. <laughs> Final thoughts, would you recommend Red Tails? No, no, it's horribly boring and, yeah. and, and childish and poorly written and terrible. And I would add to that insulting. Yeah. And that's all there is to say about it. It's insulting and I'm not even black. Well, now that we've successfully ended racism, we should probably get back to work on the VCR. Oh, yeah, that's a wonderful idea. Yeah, you know more about this model than I do when yeah. you get to work on that. Well, the first thing we have to do is uh, this. You racist.